Hi there! In this video we are going to write a trigonometric equation and then we are going to use that equation to solve for a specific height. So as the paddle on a paddle boat turns, the height h of a single paddle from the water surface can be modeled with a sinusoidal function. When a stopwatch reads 5 seconds, one of the paddle blades was at its highest 18 feet above the water surface. Assume the wheel's diameter is 20 feet and it completed a revolution every 9 seconds. Write a trigonometric equation to express h in terms of t. So there's a lot of information in here. We have that at 5 seconds the paddle blade was at its highest, which was 18 feet above the water surface. We also have that the diameter is 20 feet and that a complete revolution happens every nine seconds. So we have a lot of information here. What I like to do is take that information and graph it. So we will draw our graph and this will be time in seconds and this will be height in feet. We know the highest point is at 18 feet and we know that the diameter of this paddle, so not the paddle but of the wheel, is 20. So that means that from its maximum to its minimum should be a distance of 20. So its minimum is going to be here at negative 2. So this is the max, this is the min. And then exactly halfway in between this, well, if the diameter is 20, half of that is 10, negative 2 plus 10 is 8. So the middle of this function is going to fall on 8. And we call that middle line our sinusoidal axis. That's our sinusoidal axis. Now, the stopwatch at 5 seconds, we were at its maximum. So at 5, we were up here at its maximum. This is the first point that we know. And then we know that it took nine seconds to make a full revolution. It took nine seconds to get back up to that height of 18. So five plus nine is 14. So we are back up at its max right here. Now, of course, we could graph this out. It's going to be at its minimum exactly halfway in between here and then exactly halfway in between here. It's going to cross the sinusoidal axis. And so it's going to look something like that. And of course, I'm drawing on a computer screen. And so that's not super beautiful. OK, so do we have enough information to write a trig equation? Well, we're going to put everything in terms of h and t. And let's just write our general equation here, h of t is going to equal our amplitude times cosine of our, we'll say 2 pi over our period of time minus whatever the horizontal displacement is, plus k. So that is just our basic equation, and we will fill in all the things that we know. So amplitude is the distance between the sinusoidal axis and the max. That's going to be this distance here. And so that's going to be 10. So we're going to replace that a with a 10. The function that you choose is going to be based off your first point. Our first point is at a maximum. So because our first point is at a maximum, this is going to be a positive cosine function. If it would have started at the minimum, if it would have started right here, it would have been a negative cosine. So you'd put a negative out front and then cosine. If it would have started at the sinusoidal axis, then you would have wrote this as a sine function um, and so forth. Then we have 2 pi over our period. Well, it tells us our period is 9. It completes a revolution every 9. T is our variable, so we will not change that out. We're going to keep the T because we want it in terms of T minus our horizontal displacement. Well, again, we are looking at this first point, and our horizontal displacement is 5. So minus 5. And then lastly, this is our vertical displacement. And our vertical displacement is where the sinusoidal axis is, and that's 8. So we're going to say plus 8. And this all equals h of t. So there is, there is our function. Now, what I like to do is I like to plug that into Desmos just to make sure that it lines up with what I would think. And so the things that I think is that I'm going to have a maximum at the ordered pair 518. 
And then I'm going to have another maximum at the ordered pair 14, 18. And so if that ends up lining up, I know that I've graphed this at least somewhat correctly. So let's go ahead and plug it in and then analyze um, what this looks like. So we said our function was 10 cosine of 2 pi over 9 times x minus 5 plus 8. So let's go ahead and analyze this function here. Well, the first thing that I see is that I do have a maximum at 518. I do see that my minimum is at negative 2. And then I have another maximum of 1418. So this is really nice. This means that I did graph this correctly. So now we're ready to go to part B. So part B says algebraically determine when the paddle on its way up would be seven feet above the surface of the water during the second turn of the wheel. So on its way up would be in this, this segment right here. And we want to know when is it going to be at 7. So when is it going to be about here? Now we know our answer is going to be between 9.5 and 14. And so that's really good information. So let's go ahead and set this up. So we want to know when is it going to be 7. So we're going to have 7 equals 10 cosine of 2 pi over 9 um, t minus 5 plus 8. We're going to do some simple algebra here first. So we're going to subtract 8. And so we're going to get negative 1 equals 10 cosine 2 pi over 9 t minus 5. And I apologize for my handwriting. Again, I am writing on a computer screen. We are going to divide by 10. So we're going to get negative 1 tenth equals cosine of 2 pi over 9, t minus 5. Now, we're trying to get this t alone. We're trying to solve for time. So in order to undo a cosine, you have to do the arc cosine. And so for room's sake, I'm going to write up here. So we're going to have the inverse cosine or the arc cosine of negative 1 over 10 equals 2 pi over 9 times t minus 5. Now remember, when you actually take that inverse cosine, you're going to get a plus and a minus answer. The calculator is only going to tell you the plus piece of it, but you are going to get a plus and a minus. So let's go ahead and in Desmos, we will plug in inverse cosine. Oops, I didn't want to plug it in there. Okay, inverse cosine of negative 1 over 10. And we're going to get plus and minus 1.67. So this turns into plus and minus 1.67 equals 2 pi over 9 t minus 5. We're going to multiply by 9 over 2 pi. So we'll go back to the calculator and let's go ahead and multiply by 9 over 2 pi because that's the reciprocal of 2 pi over 9. And we still have a plus and minus. Remember that. So we have positive 2.39 and negative 2.39. So we have 2.39 equals t minus 5. And then we have um, negative 2.39 equals t minus 5. And remember that really, as soon as you take this inverse cosine, what happens is you can add or subtract 9n. Why 9n? Why? Because that's the period. Because that's the period of the function. And so every 9, we're going to be in exactly that same place again. Um, so let's go ahead and do this piece of it. So we are going to get, um, when we add 5, we're going to get t equals, uh, when we add 5 to that, we get 7.39 plus 9n. And we get t equals, when I add 5 to this, I get 2.61 plus 9n. Now, 
these are equations to help us find any point on this curve. Those are equations to find any point on this curve. We are specifically looking for a point between 9.5 and 14. If I add 9 to this one, I'm outside of that range that I want because 7 plus 9 is going to be 16. So that's going to be outside of the range. If I add 9 to this one, I'm going to get 11.61 feet. So that is within the range that we're looking for. That is between these two values. So that's going to be our answer. But let's just go back to Desmos and double check it because we love double checking our answers. So I'm going to put y equals 7 here. And I want to figure out when on the way back up the second rotation is this crossing. So this one is the first rotation. This one would be the second rotation. And on its way back up is right here. And look at that. It is 11.61 seconds. So we know we did it correctly. Now, of course, you could have started this problem by plugging in y equals 7 and figuring out what time it would be. And then you could have worked algebraically through it after you knew the answer. Um, either way works. I like to work through it algebraically and then check my work.